On today's Star Wars Legends lore video, we talk about the Rebel Alliance's first, lesser well-known attack on the Death Star. Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Legends Lore. Today we are talking about one of my favorite books in the old Star Wars Expanded Universe, Death Star. Death Star chronicles the life of the battle station itself, along with the people who lived on it from its construction, all the way until its fateful end at the Battle of Yavin. One thing we learn about in the book is an attack launched by the Rebel Alliance on a then unfinished but still mostly operational Death Star. And although this battle hasn't really been mentioned in other media, it would have been a fairly significant part of galactic history. It all starts off as squadrons of TIE fighters are performing training exercises outside of the Death Star. As a sense of scale, at this point there's about 10 squadrons of fighters. The squadron typically has 12 fighters, which equals 120 TIEs in total. The training is then interrupted by a message from Governor Tarkin. He calls off all drills and tells the fighter to arm their weapons and form up in a defensive perimeter around the Death Star. He announces that a Lucre Hulk class battlecruiser has just dropped out of hyperspace a few thousand kilometers away from the Death Star. There's very little question that this is a rebel attack, and the TIE fighters out in space are now the first line of defense. Tarkin, along with Admiral Mahdi, who is in command of the Imperial Fleet, which is supposed to be protecting the battle station, take control of all Imperial forces from one of the Death Star's bridges. They discuss rebel strategy, stating that although a Lucre Hulk alone doesn't possess a lot of firepower, it's most likely being used primarily to carry starfighters. The Death Star is guarded by a substantial Imperial fleet. For that reason, the Alliance can't launch a traditional attack with capital ships. They would lose too many of their ships and they may not be able to operate moving forward. The two men realize that the Lucre Hulk is likely full of fighters. Fighters which will try to slip past Imperial defenses and damage the Death Star directly. Tarkin further realizes that even if they can't manage to destroy it, they could severely put it behind a schedule, which would be a loss in and of itself for the Empire. Confirming their suspicions, the Lucre Hulk almost immediately launches 500 X-Wings in two distinct waves. What the Alliance presumably don't know is that the Death Star is operational. Tarkin orders the station to fire, you may fire when ready. and with only 4% energy and with the target being thousands of kilometers away, it manages to successfully destroy the Lucre Hulk class battlecruiser in a single shot. However, while the carrier is destroyed, the launch fighters remain. By this point, however, Imperial Star Destroyers in the area and the Death Star have also started scrambling their own defenses and now there are over 1,000 extra TIE fighters joining the battle. The initial 10 squad of fighters remain in a defensive position around the DS-1. The X-Wings now are basically on a suicide mission. Rather than trying to take out the TIEs, they are trying to attack the Death Star directly, doing as much damage as they possibly can. This ends up being a terrible strategy. The ignored TIE fighters end up massacring the Rebel Alliance pilots. Of the 250 X-Wings, which are a part of the first wave, only a few slip through the 120 TIEs. By the time the second wave is Hit, the defensive perimeter has been reinforced with ties from the Death Star and the Star Destroyers and no further X-Wings get anywhere close to the battle station. In total, over 500 X-Wings are destroyed by TIE fighters while the Empire loses less than 100 of its own pilots. This was a devastating loss for the Rebel Alliance. Not only do they lose a ton of pilots and fighters, but they also lose one of their only capital ships. Can you imagine how much use these X-Wings and these pilots would have been at the Battle of Yavin? This really was was a terrible decision, both on a grand strategic level and when talking about individual tactics for the fighters. During the battle, Admiral Dalla, who would become a relatively important Imperial later in Star Wars Legends, is injured after an X-Wing attacks the bridge of the ship she's commanding. We don't know the type of ship she was commanding or how she was engaging the X-Wings, but she is seriously injured, which results in some memory loss. By this point, Dalla had been the paramour lover of Tarkin for some time, but after this he would put her in charge of a small fleet guarding the Maw, where she would appear later in Star Wars Legends. In response to the attack, the Death Star was moved to the other side of the gravity well which it was stationed in. It would have been moved further, but its hyperdrives were not fully functional, and Tarkin figured that if the Rebels came and saw that the Death Star was gone, they'd assume that it jumped to another system. And that's it. That's the story of the Alliance's first attack on the Death Star, at least in Star Wars Legends. What do you think of
of this story? Do you think this kind of military engagement adds to the lore? Are you happy that canon seems to have gone in a different direction? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to get further involved in the community, make sure to join the Discord at discord.gg slash Eckhart's Ladder, follow me on Twitter, and of course subscribe to the second channel. Until next time, may the force be with you. Thank you.